Okay, today we're going to talk about aircraft materials and structures. And up to now, we've avoided in all our discussion talking about what airplanes are made of. Instead, we focused on form and function. We can divide the structures and materials discussion into two parts. One having to do with the airframe, and the second having to do with propulsion. First, let's talk about airframe materials and structures. And this discussion is from Fielding's book, section 5.2, which is on pages 55 to 62. Essentially, the airframe structure must meet the following conflicting requirements. Must be low weight. Have acceptable both raw material and fabrication costs. Have sufficient strength. To meet the maximum expected loads with some safety factor needs to have sufficient stiffness to prevent undue distortion of the structure it needs to have good fatigue and corrosion resistance And where necessary, you have to have a material that has a good tolerance for high temperatures. So that's a tall order, but some materials fit the bill, or at least for some of those requirements, and some common materials for aircraft include first aluminum alloys these have high strength and stiffness to weight ratios they're relatively low cost unfortunately they have poor fatigue and high temperature performance so these are usually limited To use uh, to about 130 degrees Celsius continuous operation is the the upper limit. That's equivalent to an airframe speed of about Mach 2.2 due to kinetic heating at those speeds. And this is the most commonly used aircraft material since most airplanes don't go Mach 2.2. Another common material is titanium. This has even better strength to weight and stiffness to weight ratios than aluminum and is usable at elevated temperatures. Unfortunately, it's expensive. So it's only used in areas uh, in an airframe where it's really necessary, for example, firewalls. Steel is heavier, but it's good for highly stressed components um, and for ones that have uh, high fatigue loads. So, used for things like landing gear, 
and engine pylons. And the engine pylons are the attachment between the engine and the wing. And finally, carbon fiber and composites, which are increasingly being used in, in more and more aspects of aircraft structural design. These are main reason is that these are lightweight materials. The challenge with using them is fabrication and joining. You can't weld, for example, uh, composites together. <laughs>